Hello and welcome to the Monday, June 5th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I want to start out with a vulnerability that I already covered on Friday, but has been really a big issue this weekend, so I do want to cover it again. It's a vulnerability in Move It Transfer. Move It Transfer is software that's used to transfer files, often used in larger organizations. It does support a number of different uh, protocols. HTTP, HTTPS is affected here. The root cause is a SQL injection vulnerability, but a SQL injection vulnerability that does allow arbitrary code execution. Typically, an attacker will use it to upload a web shell. Once they have a web shell, of course, then the sky is the limit and they'll do whatever they need to do to, for example, exfiltrate additional files or maybe upload and run additional code. Initially, the vulnerability was made public uh, by Progress, the company behind uh, Move It Transfer, on May 31st. Uh, there are patches available, at least for the more recent versions of Move It Transfer. However, the exploit has also been pretty much released as soon as the patch was released so now you have bots basically scanning the internet and exploiting exposed instances if you do have an exposed instance of move it transfer assume it has been compromised even if you have applied the patch as early as uh, Friday, just because by that time already we saw a ton of uh, the exploits uh, going around and looking for exposed uh, systems. The CVE ID of the vulnerability is 2023-34362. And if for whatever reason you're not able to patch, well, uh, then you pretty much are left with disabling HTTP, HTTPS, which I don't think is really that much of a real solution uh, for this particular uh, problem. In addition to a link to the official advisory, I'll also add links uh, to blogs by Rapid7 and Mandiant. Uh, both include additional, in the case of compromise, rules to detect uh, compromise, and also tricks how you may be able to figure out what files, for example, were transferred by the attacker. And Bleeping Computer has a write-up of a somewhat mysterious theft of a cryptocurrency from users who use Atomic Wallet. The developers of Atomic Wallet apparently have no real idea what's going on here, whether it's a problem with the wallet or something happening with the users, maybe some phishing attack or whatever. They're really just collecting data right now, but Apparently, this started happening a few days ago. So if it would be some other attack that's not directly related to the software, it may have possibly been spread out over a longer time frame than that. The developers of Atomic Wallet also did remove it from their download site. Actually, I think that download site is just not available or accessible right now, just to make sure that it's not maybe compromised software. If you are affected by this, well, Atomic is asking you to fill out a Google Doc worksheet that they set up where they just try to collect some information about the victims to figure out if there's some kind of common denominator. I have seen sort of a little bit an uptake in some phishing attacks against cryptocurrencies in general. So maybe I'll write up one of them tomorrow, but uh, at this point it does not really look like sort of a phishing attack, more something fundamentally wrong with Atomic Wallet. In total, $35 million in cryptocurrencies have been reported stolen so far. So it could be that even more was stolen, but it just hasn't been reported yet. 
And then we have an update for MageCard. MageCard is the group that injects JavaScript into companies' checkout pages and such in order uh, to steal uh, payment card information. The latest uh, version of uh, this type of attack was written up uh, by Roman Lewowski from Akamai. And uh, basically one of the updates here is that uh, MageCard now also uses legitimate uh, websites in order to exfiltrate the data. Typically what uh, MageCard did and what it sort of is famous for is uh, for kind of supply st chain style attacks where they compromise uh, provider of some tracking JavaScript or such that a lot of uh, companies are including, then it modifies that JavaScript that's now being included in all of these victim websites. This newer version is more directly attacking the websites and injecting JavaScript there, but then using sort of these well-known or known to be harmless uh, websites to exfiltrate the data to, of course, those websites are compromised as well. Well, that's it for today. Uh, thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.